So thyroid, let's start with thyroid. Thyroid's the gland in the neck. It's stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone in the, the hypothalamus pituitary system. Uh, stimulates the thyroid. These are the symptoms of low thyroid. <coughs> Fatigue, weight gain, headaches, migraines, constipation, insomnia, and sleep apnea is associated with, can be associated with low thyroid. Pain syndromes, joint pains, myofascial fibromyalgia, uh, cognitive dysfunction, mood disorders, cold intolerance, menstrual irregularities, infertility, low libido, and ultimately, if not treated, heart failure. Years ago, when thyroid wasn't treated, people would present uh, with what's called nixedema, and they would be, have heart failure. We don't see that so much anymore. Just a little bit about the thyroid. So the thyroid stimulating hormone is produced in, that, in the pituitary. It's stimulating the thyroid to produce T4 and T3. T4 is actually converted to T3 in the thyroid, in the kidneys, and in the liver. And therefore, uh, when someone has one of the symptoms of thyroid, really it's important for a doctor to, to check the thyroid stimulating hormone, but also the free T3 and the free T4. Many doctors do not do this. They only check the TSH, the one in the pituitary hormone. They assume that there's going to be adequate conversion, but the cells in your body have nine to one, uh, they have receptors, many more, nine to one receptors T3 to T4. So there's many more T3 receptors in the body. So there are things that prevent that conversion T4 to T3, and these are some of them. So deficiencies in zinc, vitamins, selenium, iodine. Now we don't see that much iodine deficiency. There are areas in the world that have um, what's called goiter belts, where they have huge thyroids and low iodine. Our, our salt is iodinized. We eat Japanese food. You know, there's, we get sources of iodine, so it's rare to have a real full iodine deficiency, but there, it, it's possible. Low iron can re lead to <coughs> decreased conversion of T4 to T3. Toxins, lead and met and mercury, um, that we might get from fish, from fish or other um, environmental sources. High cortisol, so stress leading to high cortisol can decrease the conversion of T4 to T3. Surgery can do this and some drugs like beta blockers, lithium, or, or chemotherapy. Um, <clears throat> so there's actually uh, quoted in, in the Journal of American Heart Association circulation, there's a T3 syndrome where there's an increased risk of cardiac death in, in patients with low T3. So this is an important thing to check. <clears throat> So in conclusion about thyroid treatment, optimal thyroid function requires adequate nutrition, can be affected by toxic exposure, medications, and other hormone dysfunctions. And most people that need thyroid replacement need both T4 and T3. Some of the examples of supplementation include Armour Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, Cytomel, so these are some of them. And a lot of the endocrinologists don't like to use these. Um, so, not, you know, you're not going to find every doctor agreeing with this, and there, who knows why? It might be a drug company money thing, who knows? But, um, but most doctors will give just the T4, the Synthroid, and be done with it. Now, many people do fine on that, but I see kind of a skewed population. I have a lot of patients that come in, and they're very unhappy on the, you know, Synthroid, and they, they're looking for, they have low T3, and they really need a different supplementation. So what happens, what's cortisol? Cortisol is produced in the adrenal glands and it increases, so this is one hormone that does, does increase with age. Um, cortisol is necessary when you have an emergency situation, like say you're in a car accident. Cortisol pours out into the body. We want the blood sugar to go up. We want vasoconstriction to happen so we don't bleed out. We want, we want inflammation to occur so healing occurs if we have an injury, but we don't want this on a daily basis 24-7. So what happens is when we're under a lot of stress, our cortisol levels are pouring out of the adrenal glands. This causes a problem with sleep. This also increases risks of diabetes, hypertension, weight gain, um, and because of the elevated glucose and the inflammatory factors. So let's come back to hormone replacement in a woman. So what are the symptoms of menopause due to low estrogen, progesterone, and even low testosterone? Women do have testosterone. 
hot flashes, sleep disturbance, weight gain, mood changes, dry skin, itchy headaches, joint pains, thinning hair, urinary incontinence, low libido, vaginal dryness. We know all these symptoms. So again, I mentioned estro estrogen and progesterone uh, premenopausally are produced in the ovary. Postmenopausally, they're produced in, in a lower degree in the adrenal glands and in the fat cells. So there's actually a conversion of, this kind of sounds strange, but testosterone to estrogen in the fat cells. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. But estrogen and progesterone go together. So estrogen you can think of as a proliferator. It makes things grow. Progesterone keeps it in check. So for example, the lining of the uterus is stimulated by estrogen, preparing the, the uterus for a baby implantation of an embryo. But the uh, progesterone keeps the, the lining of the uterus in check, and it also keeps pregnancies going. So they go together. And um, so, think, so we'll come back to that, like why we should, we should treat with both estrogen and progesterone, and what types of estrogen and progesterone we should treat with. So the symptoms of andropause are not that much different than, than uh, menopause. Again, andropause, you know, it's, it's kind of a made up term, but it's, that's because it's more subtle in men. You know, women, it's like menopause, you know, average age, 50, definition, one year with no periods, menopause. Andropause, you know, is more subtle and um, may not be an issue at all for some men. But if the symptoms of fatigue, weight gain, poor stamina, decreased muscle tone, I have men that say, I just, I go to the gym and I'm exhausted. I can't, I can't work out, I can't build up my muscle, I have erectile dysfunction, low libido. So when, you, when it gets to this point, then that's the time to check. And what we check is free testosterone. Um, we check a total testosterone and, and determine if it's appropriate, you know, what the levels are. And there's a wide range of levels of testosterone. So one level for a 20-year-old is going you know, is, is to be maybe different for a 50-year-old. But if someone is having all these symptoms and they're just borderline according to the reference range, then they, it might be appropriate to treat with testosterone. And then, as I mentioned, sleep apnea, for some reason, we don't know how, but there can be association with low testosterone. So coming back to uh, the, the subject of hormone replacement in women, these are some of the studies that have come, go, gone on in the last few years. The biggest one we're going to talk about is the Women's Health Initiative study. And this was a landmark study in the early 90s, um, and it basically it used a popular estrogen called Primarin and a progestin, which is not a progesterone. It was a synthesized, um, you know, that is something that binds to the progesterone receptors, but it has very different effects, and I'll review that. So, this is where Premarin came from: pregnant mares urine. Great idea, huh? Okay. So that's so Premarin has a ton of metabolites. In fact, one of the metabolites decreases; it actually affects the detox process in the liver. Um, Provera, which is actually even the bigger culprit, is that progestin. It's not a, quote, natural progesterone. It has very different effects. So this is, so a progestin includes something called Provera. This is what was used in the Women's Health Initiative study. It's in oral contraceptives. It's in the uh, intramuscular um, birth control called Depo-Provera. Um, so progestin actually increases blood pressure, it causes, uh, uh, causes bloating, it causes headaches. It's actually a woman who's pregnant who's taking a, a progesterone, a Provera progestin. Um, it can be detrimental to the fetus. Progesterone, on the other hand, decreases blood pressure. It's, it has a diuretic effect. It's calming. It's actually used in pregnancies to support the pregnancy. So very different drugs.